Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. I got an email recently from a gentleman that said, Steve, how come is it these attorneys who get in trouble continue to do bad things and they can't be stopped? And is it because attorneys police themselves? And in most states, there is some kind of commission overseas attorneys. And in Michigan, the commission is made up of non-attorneys. Now, they are still under the auspices of the Michigan Supreme Court. But the Michigan Supreme Court realized years ago that, well, if we put together a panel of attorneys uh, and it's their job to oversee punishment of other attorneys, that wouldn't necessarily go well. So we'll do what we can to have the commission made up of non-attorneys. There might be a few attorneys on it, but, the, but many of the people are not. That's the point. So the other thing to remember, though, is quite often you have to look at what happens to an attorney and whether or not somebody could have stopped that. So here's a story about a disbarred attorney who was arrested after using fake ID to get hired. And it looks like he's done something similar to this more than once. And the story is out of Ohio. So Alexander sent this to me, thank you very much, from WCPO. Christian LeDuc wrote this. A disbarred attorney who previously practiced law in Cincinnati was arrested by federal agents for allegedly using a fake identity to get hired by at least three different law firms, according to the Department of Justice press release. Now, some people in my audience right now are young attorneys going, wait, this guy got three job offers? <laughs> That's the story, Steve. You're burying the lead. Well, remember, while he's making up fake identities, I think he can also make up fake credentials. So the man is of Mason, Ohio, facing charges of aggravated identity theft, wire fraud, and social security member fraud, according to prosecutors. He uh, indicated his intent to resign from practicing law back in 2021 following a complaint filed the previous year by the Cincinnati Bar Association. Now, I'm not sure much power a Cincinnati Bar Association would have compared to the Ohio State Bar Association. I know in Michigan, for instance, there is the Detroit Bar Association, the Oakland County Bar Association, and, of course, the State Bar Association. Uh, And I've never heard of any of those local organizations taking action against somebody, mainly because they don't have any power to do so. Usually they're just organizations that are more social in nature. Uh, Prosecutors said later that year he was indicted on charges in Hamilton County for allegedly stealing client funds on two separate occasions. After his indictments, the U.S. District Court for the Southern District of Ohio entered an order disbarring him. So he was disbarred by the U.S. District Court in Ohio. He was arrested in May of 2022, sentenced to probation in 2023. According to federal court documents, while his cases were pending in Hamilton County, he used the alias Richard Williams, to get hired by a law firm in Washington, D.C. Then, in September of 2022, he used the false identity to apply to a law firm in Miami. A short time later, he's offered a job with a starting salary of $185,000 a year, along with a $5,000 signing bonus. Now, the question, of course, is, if he's licensed in Ohio at one point in time, to become licensed in Florida or someplace else, theoretically, you have to take that bar if you wanted to actually be licensed. The question is, was he licensed? Did he go through the process? Or did he merely say that he had? Because apparently this guy is good at just saying stuff. He's accused of using another individual's social security number, passport number, and banking information to complete his onboarding paperwork with a law firm. Uh, Investigators say back in 2023, April, the Florida law firm received a tip that uh, the man was not who he said he was, making the firm aware of their new hire's actual identity, which led to his termination. In July of this year, he once again used the alias to try to get another job. This time, he allegedly interviewed with senior management of a law firm in Coral Gables, Florida. Prosecutors said he doctored a screenshot of the name Richard Coleman Williams Jr. in the online D.C. bar membership directory and attached that to his resume. Following that interview... He was offered a starting salary of $195 with a signing bonus of $10,000. And again, (laughs) all my young attorneys are going, wait, where are these jobs? According to the press release, the firm eventually determined he was using a fake identity and did not hire him. And I'll be honest with you. Most law firms, when they're hiring somebody, will go through what they're brought, you know, what the person brings into an interview. And they'll go through that stuff. And however... They're not really expecting many people to come in using fake names and fake identities and fake ID. That is so strange. Of course, that's why this is in the news. I've never heard of this happening before 
where somebody is applying for jobs at a law firm, at law firms, plural, and they actually were an attorney at one time, disbarred, and are therefore now applying for jobs under different names in different states. That would be very, very difficult to pull off for any length of time in real life. Attorney for the Southern District of Ohio said that the man was arrested in Mason, Ohio, Thursday morning and scheduled to appear in federal court in Cincinnati Thursday afternoon. So that's the story. But the guy got in trouble in Ohio. There had been complaints filed, but a U.S. district court actually entered an order that said that he is barred from practicing law. Now, again, I'm not sure how much power they have to do that. Uh, federal courts have got a lot of power. But the licenses are granted, generally speaking, by state bar associations under the auspices of the state courts. However, if a federal court issues an order that says, we think this guy shouldn't practice law anymore, if they forward that to the Ohio Supreme Court, I suspect the Ohio Supreme Court's going to look at that and go, you know, guys, we think you're on to something here. <laughs> we're going we're to take this one up and agree with you. So the problem, of course, is that once he was told he can no longer practice law in Ohio, he apparently got hired, at least on paper, at a Washington, D.C. law firm, and then applied for at least two jobs in Florida where he had varying degrees of success there as well. Don't know if he got any money. It says that they'd offered him a signing bonus plus a salary, but they also found out about him very, very quickly thereafter. But I'm also just as curious about when he applies for the job in Florida if they're going to check the Florida bar to confirm that he is who he says he is and that he's licensed to practice there. Now, it's true. You could apply for a job in another state and say, I want to work here and um, I will take the bar as soon as I can because it's usually offered twice a year. So it might be offered, like, say, I don't know, in July, right? And this is April. I could say, hire me right now. I'll come down. Obviously, I can't appear in courts and I can't you know, do certain things, but I can get my feet wet and, you know, start acclimating myself to the law firm. And then when the bar exam happens, I will take it and I'll pass it. And you could get hired on that promise also. But again, the guy's using other people's names and information. And remember, when you steal, and again, pro tip, when you steal the identity of somebody who's out there who's a real person, that might be a good identity in that sense. But it's a bad identity in the sense that someone else is using it already. And so somewhere down the road, that person's going to get a hint that, oh, there's somebody in Florida using your name and your picture. And, you know, so these kind of plans can't make it very far. They can't. But here we are. The guy got caught. So now he's facing more trouble. And I suspect his law practice is over. Uh, so, Alexander, thanks for sending it. Christian LeDuc wrote that for WCPO. DOJ, disbarred attorney from Mason, Ohio, arrested after using fake ID to get hired, and he kept, he kept getting good job offers. Crazy. Questions or comments? Put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye bye. Thank you for watching Lato's Law. Do you think the word BAMF is the answer to a word scramble game gone wrong?